I've not given an update on my BBS HD bike for a while, but it's still going strong. I'll do a full overview of how it's going after three years of abuse shortly. But in this video, I want to talk about a new design revision of the BBS HD that just came out, which I am on one hand really excited and surprised by, and on the other hand, I'm a bit cautious because my feeling is that Bafang are not so keen on the way people like me treat their motors. So this video will look at the information I found out so far through the Discord channel and through Google. A lot of the information has come from an install video from an Aussie e-bike company that I can't actually pronounce the name of. It appears that they have the exclusive dealership for the redesigned motor in Australia at least. Links to them and the video are in the description. The kit they're doing looks very comprehensive and well put together. It certainly looks a big step up in terms of the way Bafang are looking to present themselves and bring their products to the market. The revised motors will have the designation 325 and 623 in the USA, and these will presumably replace the BBS02 and the BBS HD designations. There's been a UL listing for the motors, and they do look very similar in specification to the older design. The UL listing is actually quite a big thing, as it means that a US standards and testing body has verified a Chinese mid-drive motor for use in the USA. More information again on this in the description. As I said, the best information so far I've got from an installation video from the Aussie guys. So let's have a look at the motor along with the changes made and talk about what might be the good and bad points from a stock perspective as well as from a hot rodding perspective. The mounting of the motor has been revised. The lock nut that holds the motor onto the frame is now assisted with a steel tie that goes around the down tube of the bike. The lock nut with this support added is torqued to a lower spec of 60 newton meters. Previously a much greater torque for the lock ring was recommended. I suspect the reason for the change is that despite there being torque ratings, people don't actually use a torque wrench, including the e-bike company making the video, and after a while the motor wears the bottom bracket and becomes loose. So essentially, it's easier for Bafang to engineer a solution that makes allowance for bad installation than to try and educate and ensure good installation. The chain ring that comes stock looks rather like the excellent Lecky one and looks much nicer than the piece of crap that came before. It looks to be the narrow wide teeth which helps keep the chain on and even more interestingly, it looks like you could swap it out to a different ring fairly easily as the outer part of the chain ring is held on with bolts. The motor casing itself looks essentially the same but with a more modern look. It's made out of magnesium now which is meant to be better for shedding heat. The surfaces are a bit flatter looking so it might make it easier to use additional heat sinking. It's still a big chunky solid looking motor which I think is a good thing. The controller is a grey area. From the specs, it looks like they've made alterations to the communication protocol. It looks like it goes in roughly the same place as before. How much it's changed internally is a guess. You would hope Bafang has made improvements. The display the kit comes with is the standard Bafang stuff though, so I do suspect it's small quality improvements to get the desirable UL rating. So what does that mean for people like me, who like to extract more power and performance from the motor? Can we still do it? On paper, it would appear that not much has changed. Remove the old controller, hook up an ASI or a phase runner, and it should work as before. I've not seen anything to suggest that the rotor, stator, and gearing has changed, so controller settings and maps should still be valid. The subtle changes are going to require potentially a reworked harness and maybe a new design for the cover that goes on where the stock controller would fit, so nothing too crazy really. I am just speculating here, and it might be that most of the dimensions of bolt patterns are still the same, and it's all purely cosmetic. I'm very interested to see what they've done with the nylon gear though. Is it still the same nylon? Has it been changed in size or material of construction? Any changes here would render the aftermarket peak and metal gears useless until a redesign took place. The cranks still use a square taper design. Isis would have been a nice upgrade to see. In terms of sizes, you can still get up to the 120mm length for the spindle, which means you can still use it on a fat bike and make probably the most funny bike money can buy. I might be a bit biased here though. The only way to know any of this for sure is to get one. 
which is really kind of cool because my mate in town wanted to do a BBS HD bike and I was going to hot rod it for him so we can get one of these new versions, install it stock and then have some fun upgrading it. See if it can still be done with all of the changes. So the new design is out on the 18th of June and I'll be seeing if I can get my hands on one and then do a full install on my mate's bike. I'm really, really looking forward to doing another BBS HD install and build. This time though, I'm going to get to make a ton of cool installation videos to go with it. I'll do an update on my own BBS HD fat bike and how it's holding up after three winters shortly. Thanks for watching. Cheers.